So there are four critical resources you need to think about. As we just talked about, there are physical resources, financial resources, human resources, and intellectual resources. Let's take a look at each one of these. For physical resources, these might seem at first kind of the obvious is uh, your company's facilities, and that is office space, company location. Are you in downtown Palo Alto or are you in Ann Arbor, Michigan? Or are you in Delft in the Netherlands or Santiago? Where's the best place to locate uh, your company's headquarters and where you're going to do most of the work? The second part of physical resources, where are you going to get the supply for your product and services? So, for example, if you're making silicon, um, where, who's going to be your silicon wafer supplier in, in, in the value chain? Or if you're making steel, where are you going to get the iron ore? Or are you going to need thousands of square feet of warehouse space if you're going to set up a distribution center? And what's really interesting is this kind of obviously affects where are you going to put your company facilities? Maybe you want to have your manufacturing facility next to the key supplier. Or you might say, okay, we understand uh, they're distant and we can manage that remotely, but you need to actually think through not only this relationship, but as you'll see, the relationship between resources and the partners part of the business model canvas, because some of these supplies and services require deep relationships, not just ordering out of a catalog, but true partnerships. Now, the other thing to just remember is many physical goods, if you're in a physical channel, are capital intensive, which is a fancy word for saying doing a startup like Tesla or SpaceX is very different than doing a iOS or Android app. Uh, the amount of resources you're going to need for physical goods just are dramatically different. And when you're thinking about the finance component, you want to really think about what happens after year one, year two, et cetera. How do you scale this business? And in the uh, second decade of the 21st century, a good number of clean tech startups and life sciences startups are now encountering this phenomenon. Is it works great as a startup, but there's a valley of death for capital and scale.